Hello, my name is Helge Simon, I'm Head of Software Engineering for the Android company and today's topic is building physics. So let's have a look at the agenda. First, I just want to quickly uh, have an overview about the model parameters. I know m many of you already know Envimed, so we keep this short. Then I want to talk about building atmosphere interactions, because these are very complex and in order to examine building physics, you have to understand what the atmosphere is doing. And also, in order to understand what the atmosphere is doing, you have to understand what the buildings are doing. So they're intertwined. You cannot understand one without the other. Then I want to have a look at buildings in Envimat. How are they digitized? How do we model them? What are facade structures? What do facades consist out of? And how do we go about modeling and simulating them? And then in the fourth step, I want to go and do a hands-on. I want to look at the applications, go through the, uh, the database manager, digitize model area, run a simulation, and then I want to analyze the data. These are, all these spots will be um, divided into different parts. Let's see and, and start with the first model parameters. So as many of you know, this is a quite familiar picture for you, or for the most of you at least. Um, the Envimat model is a fully 3D atmosphere model where lots of scalars, um, vectors, etc. are being calculated. In today's focus is this big building here. And as you, already, as you can see already in this schematic, most of the arrows you're seeing are connected with the buildings. This is of course because um, buildings play a huge and important role in the urban microclimate. And uh, the transfers, the heat conduction uh, transfers of course need to be modeled accurately in order not to only simulate the building physics but also in order to simulate the atmosphere accurately. I will get into the interaction in a second. Also exchanges of heat and humidity and of course of shortwave radiation need to be accounted for. So shortwave radiation is coming in, parts of it might be transmitted if, you're, if we're talking about glass facades, parts of it are reflected, others um, might be absorbed. And the long wave radiation also of course plays, plays a huge role, not just the incoming long wave radiation from the sky, but also the storage inside the building structures. So especially at nighttime, you will see that higher facade temperatures than the air temperature, for example, lead to a surplus of long wave radiation emitted by the facade and thus uh, maybe higher air temperatures. So let's have a look at the different possibilities to model areas in Envimet. As also many of you know, Envimet has a dynamic resolution. So what that means is that you can basically decide how big one cell is, so in X, Y, and Z dimension, and this leads to very different uh, model areas. It can lead to rather small model areas with a high resolution, like on the left here, or it might be even higher resolution. This is a resolution of two meters, two by two by two meters, and you can also you can also model. Uh, 7 by 7.5 meters like in the example here to the right then you have a huge model area of several kilometers this is the inner city of Vienna and when you're talking about building physics you're most likely more interested in a high resolution replication of your building so you need a high resolution which also of course due to computational effort limits the model area size but this is not of a big concern because often you're not that much interested in the greater scheme, but in the very detailed scheme, what is happening right outside my building, what is happening, um, or what are the influences of the local microclimate onto my building. This is much more in the focus then. So let's now have a look at building atmosphere interaction. As I already said, um, these interactions are quite complex and Buildings, of course, they shape the atmosphere. I guess that's quite quite obvious. When we're thinking of a city, we're thinking of buildings mostly. We're also, of course, thinking of, I don't know, parks or, or trees or something like that. But buildings are the most characterizing features of a city. 
and they of course hugely impact the atmosphere. They, they deviate the wind field, they, they alter the energy balance of the atmosphere, they cast shading, etc. The list goes on. So they have a huge impact onto uh, the atmosphere and people regard that as obvious now, nowadays. But what about the negative? So um, the, the inverse atmosphere that also changes buildings or building physics a lot. So the indoor climate hugely depends on the outdoor atmospheric conditions. The energy consumption, heating and, and cooling demands, they also hugely depend on the atmosphere outside, right outside the building. And this also corresponds to the costs then, to heating and cooling costs. So how much money do you need to spend on regulating the indoor temperature in order to be comfortable inside your building. And this is not something that is a generic atmosphere, so it's not just dependent on if your building is placed in, in London or if it's placed in uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, but even within London, it makes a huge difference if your building is placed in the city of Westminster or if it's placed in Greenwich or if it's, I don't know, placed right in the center of Sao Paulo or even more in the outskirts. So within the same city, the immediate environment hugely shapes the performance, the building's physics, and thus has an impact on how our building are performing, how the indoor climate is perceived as comfortable or not, and how much regulation is needed. So this is something that needs to be understood and that needs to be accounted for. So how do we account for that? Well, ENVYMED is of course a microclimate model. So we are originally not coming from the empirical research, but we are coming from the modeling research. So when you are having a look at building performance, of course, it is very important and imperative to also measure. But modeling has quite some nice advantages compared to empirical measurement studies. And let me show you what I mean by that. So what you can do when you model is you can isolate effects. You can say this is the measure and it is causing this. In this example I'm showing you here, on the left you see traditional roofs in a Mediterranean area. And for example you have the question, okay, you want to examine or uh, study what are the effects of a higher albedo for, for roofs onto A, the energy consumption and the cooling demand in summertime, and maybe B, on the thermal comfort at street level. And you can do this empirically, of course. You can um, change the roof tiles of buildings and convert them to a higher albedo. You can change that and then you can start measuring and, and see, okay, how much energy or cooling demand is saved, does the air conditioner not need to run that long and you can also place sensors in the street level and see okay how does it change the thermal comfort there. But you cannot examine this at the same time. You cannot see okay I cannot go there on the I don't know 20th of August 2019 and then measure until I don't know for four weeks and they'll go back in time and remove the measure and, and, and measure at the same days. This is of course not possible. Various things are changing at the same time. So the difference you're measuring might not only be caused by the, the difference in the albedo roof. In the model, you can recreate the exact scenario and only change one thing add the albedo, the high albedo roof, and then see, okay, how does this measure uh, change the outcome of the simulation result? So isolating the effects, the cause and the effect, directly linking the effect to a cause, this is something that models are capable of. And this is something very nice to understand how big does the measure influence the, the various parameters you're, you're looking for. And also what you can do is models allow you to see some kind of scaling effect. So you're not just interested in um, replacing one uh, roof of a building with a high albedo roof, but maybe you want to replace a whole city quarter. 
you don't know, does it scale linearly? Probably not. So if I have 100 square meters of Halbiter roof, it reduces the air temperature in the street level of, let's say, 0.5 Kelvin. But if I have 10 times as much of surface area, will it remove by 5 Kelvin? Probably not. So in order to get an idea how does the effect, how does the measure scale, models are very important. And thus, to, to derive guidelines from them, they are an ideal tool. What they're also quite nice and quite regularly used is because they run of quite low risk. For example, there, there might be some negative consequences you're not immediately thinking of when replacing a higher albedo roof. So maybe the air temperature rises due to um, the higher radiation, reflected radiation, or it might uh, cause other indesirable effects. So when you're just modeling them, you don't have to experience it immediately. So there's lower risk in, in, in failure. And also, uh, there's, of course, fewer costs. So the example that, like I said before, if you're interested in um, replacing a whole city quarter with, a, with these new high albedo roofs, you don't have to try it out and build it for the whole quarter. You will immediately see, maybe see the effect um, in the model and then get an idea, okay, is the effect big enough to be able to, to realize it? Is it? Does it justify all the costs that would come when, when I actually build it? So these are, of course, advantages when you use a model. And now I just want to quickly get into how Andrimet is simulating building physics. And this is a, quite a strong suit for Andrimet because it links the atmosphere with the building environment and the building um, indoor temperature, the building physics, etc. So here you see Andromeda is capable of simulating or digitizing quite complex structures with pillars and columns and everything, and an indoor courtyard, different materials uh, can be digitized, different roof types uh, can be digitized. Of course, they are always in a um, orthogonal grid structure, but depending on the resolution, you can digitize them quite finely. So this is only a two meter resolution again. So you can, or a one meter resolution, sorry, you can go down a lot in order to, to be more precise, if you so like. In a quick example, I want to show you what Animat is capable of showing in the results quite quickly. So here you have three buildings, two are quite uh, easy to see, and the third one is a greenhouse. It's in the, in the back here. So because it's uh, made out of glass, you cannot see it that well. So here's a greenhouse. Here is a light um, concrete building and here's a heavy concrete building. So um, this is much more, uh, this is much denser than this. And inside the building, there are several building zones, digitized building zones. So inside each of these buildings, um, except of the greenhouse, of course, they are uh, confined areas of air volumes. And when Andrew is now simulating uh, um, facade outside temperature, you can first clearly see that the immediate environment has a strong effect onto the outdoor facade temperature. Here you see the greenhouse. The greenhouse shows a rather low facade temperature. So because lots of the radiation is uh, transmitted inside, so you will, if you compare it and go directly to the right side, where you see the indoor temperature, you see the indoor temperature is very high in the greenhouse, as expected, of course. And uh, if you look at the differences in air temperature of the facade outside for the uh, dense cast concrete and the lightweight concrete, you see the lightweight concrete seems to have a higher temperature outside than the uh, heavy dense concrete and this is something very interesting and very nice um, you see the sh the structures or the the shade actually of the tree placed in, in front of the building here in the front so the tree is casting a shade sun is coming from here so the tree is casting a shade and this lowers the outside facade temperature where the shade um, is being cast upon the building 
and uh, if you have a look at the indoor temperatures you can clearly see that different air volumes show a different indoor temperature at that particular time. So these are capabilities of the model and they are very interesting uh, because Envimat is not just having a look at the building itself but it's modeling all the microclimate area around and this is a huge difference when you compare it to building uh, energy performance simulations where a building a uh, performance simulation would only have the building and then generic climate file for a city or a region uh, the same building would get the same meteorology uh, if it was placed here or if it was placed there or there or anywhere in the city. So the local conditions would not be accounted for. And what Envimat now is a microclimate model that is a holistic microclimate model because it's not just simulating the wind flow or the three-dimensional temperature field or the humidity field, but also radiation and, and all the uh, different uh, latent heat fluxes, sensible heat fluxes, etc. So the effects of vegetation and so on, they are all incorporated in the same model. So this makes it possible to use a microclimate file, run a simulation and then extract the data in front of the facade and then have a look at the building performance depending on the actual location inside the three-dimensional model domain. And when you look at these two different settings here on the left and on the right, you see that the same building will most likely yield very different results. You, on the left you see um, data extract from Vienna and on the right you see uh, New York Times Square and not because the different climates in Vienna and New York you would only see a difference but also because the microclimate is differently because it is shaped differently by the different structures and the geometry and the effects of vegetation surfaces surrounding buildings etc etc so this is a major advantage because Enrimet takes into account the local microclimate when considering the building physics of a place and it also, of course, takes into account what you change locally. So if you maybe plant two large trees in front, you can see the effects I showed you before, where you see, okay, these trees, they cast a shade. So the outside temperature is greatly reduced by, let's see, maybe 18 or, or 16 Kelvin. The outside um, temperature is reduced, and this is something when looking from a heat stress scenario that is of great benefit. For example, if you have the office here, you would be very happy that the um, you will not receive that much radiation so your office is not that hot. And in winter, so this is why these log technologies are of course of great importance. In winter, if you have a deciduous tree, it will lose its leaves. So in winter where you'd be happy to get the radiation, you will receive it because the tree will lose its leaves and you will get the, the sun into your office exactly like you wanted to have. Um, so these are the capabilities. Now let's have a look and we will of course in the hands-on we will see a lot more of these capabilities. Um, but first let's quickly discuss how Enumet is calculating on a very basic level um, all these different features. So Enumet has a facade model. It is a multiple node model where a wall consists out of up to three different materials. So you have material A, B and C and you put them together in a, we call it a sandwich, and this facade sandwich then uh, builds a wall or a roof depending on, on, on where it's placed. And um, for the materials we have of course the database, also for the walls, and we offer uh, quite a large selection of materials already that you can rearrange and create a new wall or you can use a wall uh, of our database. We will have a look at that in the database manager um, later. And when you place uh, these three materials in an order, uh, Enumet will automatically create a wall out of it. And the calculation is, like I said, carried out with a multiple node model. So at each boundary of a material, there's a calculation node and in the center of each material. 
So having three different materials, we come uh, to seven different nodes uh, that are calculated uh, for the heat uh, transfer from the outside to the inside and vice versa. These temperatures, they are um, estimated for the outside using the energy balance. So you have the different features of the net shorter radiation that is being absorbed. You have, of course, the long wave radiation and uh, how much long wave radiation is emitted again. You have the um, sensible heat flux, you have the latent heat flux and you have the conduction. And this has been solved um, so that the energy balance is zero. You will have a look at the T, at the temperature, and you will get the outside for say temperature. And in order to get the temperature for the inside nodes, we are using the one-dimensional Fourier equation um, uh, to get the nodes um, that are here in between. And the inside node is also, of course, being calculated using a, a constant flux of energy into the air volume inside. So, furthermore, the, this facade model can be operated in two modes. So first, you could uh, leave the indoor temperature as a prognostic variable. This is the default mode. So the indoor temperature would be calculated depending on how much energy is being transferred into the building or how much energy is going out of the building. So the indoor temperature would then be an output parameter of EnvyMet. Or you could say, okay, my indoor temperature, I have a regulated um, indoor temperature, so I have a heating or I have, a, I don't know, a, um, an AC, and then Andrew would calculate how much energy was needed in order to keep the indoor temperature constant. So this would be basically the other way around. Heat is, uh, there's a heat flux, for example, inside the building at daytime, and then you would not get the indoor temperature because this is set constant, so this would not be an output parameter, but how much energy was needed in order to keep the indoor temperature constant at the set temperature that is set by the users when starting a simulation. Okay, so this is the theoretical background. We will uh, discuss more of the theoretical background when actually using the applications. The next time we will start um, with the DB manager where we will define new walls. We will have a look at um, how do we use the basic materials that are already in the database in order to create facades, but we will also define new materials, maybe a new insulation and digitize a facade so that we can use it further when digitizing and simulating. Thank you for watching and until next time. Goodbye.